All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look here at my winter thoughts here as we're moving into the month of July. This will probably be the last month where we don't have a winter forecast out. I'm gonna start working on that very soon as the Ento is becoming a little bit more clear cut what we can expect. Things have changed a ton. <laughs> For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we will have an El Nino winner or a La Nina winner at this point? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. All right, now here we are taking a look here at the sea surface temperature anomalies across the globe. And I just want to point out a few interesting notes. And now first off, we noticed that the PDO, which is basically the Northern Pacific Ocean there offshore of the United States, Canada and Alaska, which is also a United State, but I wanted to <laughs> obviously point out that that is a separate area, obviously. We do see that there is some cooler than normal sea surface temperature south of Alaska. Also offshore of Mexico, we see some cooler than normal waters. But then in between those two pockets of colder water, we see a lot of warmer water. And this is a very confused PDO because this region is typically what we would consider to be the PDO region. But it's just somewhere between a positive and a negative. And it looks a lot closer to a negative, but it still isn't fully there yet, if you know what I mean. Now, taking a look at the Atlantic, and I need to make a hurricane season update, by the way, probably because of the updates here. We see a lot of areas in the Atlantic have below normal sea surface temperatures, including the MDR, very far below normal sea surface temperatures. But this has not held back anything, and that hardly has anything to do with the winter. I just felt like mentioning that. But waters offshore of the northeast especially have some warmer than normal sea surface temperatures also south of Greenland. This could encourage a negative NAO for a majority of the winter if we were to see this stick around. And that is a big question mark because we are pretty far from the winter time, obviously. So we're going to need to wait and see if that does end up playing out that way. I want to also draw your attention there to the our Enso region, which is offshore of Central America, where warmer waters have prevailed. So we might be taking a look at an, an El Nino winter. I really think that is a possibility at this point. You guys, if you've been keeping up with this series, have watched me go from, this will not be an El Nino, no matter what, this will not be an El Nino, this is going to be a La Nina, to, well, maybe it'll be a neutral Enso, but probably not an El Nino, to now, where I'm actually accepting the fact that this could be an El Nino winner. And that's why, you know, these early predictions, it's good to just keep updating it and stay up to date, and you guys have watched me progress through my thoughts on this. Uh, and I'm going to be the first to admit, I did not think there was any chance of an El Nino, and now I'm starting to think that is a possibility. Let's take a look here at the seven day change because this is important as well. And we see a lot of cooling in the Atlantic, also in the Northern Pacific, a lot of cooling overall. I would say the waters across the, the globe over the past seven days have actually cooled more than they've warmed, which is something that has not happened a lot over the past, I, I don't know, 10 years or so. But uh, it does look like there's actually more cooler waters than warmer waters here. Now for the Enso, you could see a lot of warming has occurred there. Uh, we see those two red dots south of Mexico, pretty well south of Mexico. That is right where that El Nino would be forming, and that's currently warming quite a bit. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on and take a zoomed-in look at the Atlantic, and then we're going to take a look at the Nino 3.4 index, which is actually how we measure the El Nino. We'll even take a look at a chart indicating how warm the Atlantic is at this point, and then we're going to get an updated chart on what the Enso could do next, El Nino or La Nina. And then some model forecasts as far as temperatures and precipitation for the upcoming winter. And then even the Climate Prediction Center's forecast as well. So many, many things still to come. All right, now here we are taking a look at the zoomed in Atlantic look. And as you can see, again, offshore of the northeast and south of Greenland, we have very warm waters, which oftentimes does mean a negative P or sorry, a negative NAO could be on the way, uh, especially if this is going to be something that continues on. And I wouldn't be surprised if it does. Usually this is a little bit of a longer term oscillation when we see these warmer waters set up here, but it could definitely turn around. That's why it's going to be so detrimental to keep updating this. This isn't considered a long range oscillation by any means. Now, again, in the southern North Atlantic there, offshore of Africa, and take that all the way to the Caribbean, we do have some colder water set up which will certainly have impacts on the upcoming hurricane season and ongoing hurricane season for sure. Here's the seven day change. And as you can see, a lot of cooling has happened towards the middle and even towards Atlantic Canada. Uh, but we've seen a lot of warming offshore of the, uh, the East Coast there. So things are changing kind of slightly, but really it's not heading in any particular direction. Here's the chart, the Nino 3.4 index. Again, this is how we measure that El Nino or La Nina. We've moved pretty far above that 0.0, .0 line. 
uh, and that it would be a, exactly a neutral end. So we're heading towards almost half a degree Celsius above average there in the Nino 3.4 index, which would be officially what is required to be considered an El Nino. It would have to stay in that for a long time, uh, but that would be a good sign that we are likely headed towards an El Nino. But since April 10th, you can see we've gone from about 0.35 degrees negative direction there to 0.35 positive at this point. So we've gone full circle since April 10th and gone to the whole other side of things. So we're going to just continue to update you guys on that, but that is an ever-changing thing that we've been uh, observing. Here is our North Atlantic chart, and as you can see, we cooled for a little bit there overall. We were warm all the way up until about April, or sorry, May 22nd there, and then we saw some drastic cooling, and now we've head back in the positive direction overall for the Atlantic. Here's our ENSO chart, and as you can see, this is as of mid-June. Things have changed a lot, but these models did kind of expect us to stay near a neutral ENSO or possibly creeping into the El Nino side of things. As we head towards DJF, which is down there on the bottom right, you can see that that is December, January, February. So that is definitely something we're going to be paying attention to, you know, over the coming months as well. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. and We're going to take a look at the modeled guidance forecast month by month for the upcoming winter as far as temperatures and precipitation is concerned. Now here's December's temperatures first off, and as you can see, pretty much warmer across the board here for the most part. Uh, this would be just a, a bit of a torch of a month. Then as we head towards January, you can see things get a little bit cooler there for the southeast. The, generally, the eastern United States is near normal according to this model. Uh, the west is warmer than normal. And then as we head towards February, we see that the northeastern corner of the United States would be colder than normal, and the western half of the country would be warmer than normal. So pretty much for this solution, for all three months, uh, this would be much warmer than normal winter for the western half of the country and a colder than normal winter for the eastern half of the country overall. Here's that precipitation outlook. December, more wet in the northern half of the country and more dry in the southern half. As we head towards January, you can see that the Pacific Northwest gets a lot of precipitation. And then even the northeast, this could be a nor'easter pattern. We could see a return of the nor'easter pattern, guys, because we've been in a La Nina, actually. But El Nino's is when we see the most nor'easters. So that's something that could be exciting if we are expected to be in an El Nino this winter. We could see a lot more of those major blizzards offshore of the East Coast, so we will be watching for that possibility. Then here is February, where I see more of a southern slider pattern. We see a lot of that for the Gulf states and then the southeast. And that was the coldest month as well, which would make a little bit more sense in my opinion. Be sure to take all of this with a grain of salt. This is a model run, and we're very far out from the winter time. I'm just showing this mostly for uh, entertainment purposes and a lot of you are curious about what this is showing so far. And it's gonna be fun to see how it progresses and changes. Here is the temperature anomaly forecast for December through February. And as you can see, warmer than normal conditions for the Western half of the country, and then more near normal conditions for the Eastern half of the country there overall. And then for the precipitation forecast, mostly again, the Northern half of the country is dealing with the most above average precipitation in the southern half of the country is dealing with the most below average precipitation. Finally, here is the Climate Prediction Center's three month forecast from December through January, or sorry, December through February that is. And they're calling for pretty much the opposite of what that model's calling for. They're saying the Northwest and the North Central United States are gonna be near normal or colder than normal most likely. And then even the Southwest, the Southeast, and the entire East Coast is looking at above normal temperatures. This is the opposite of what the models are calling for and what the oscillations would lead me to believe at this point. We also see that there is some more dry normal conditions, more dry, drier than normal conditions they're expected for the southern United States. The models did pick up on this, so they're not alone in that thought process for sure. So that is one thing that I definitely think uh, they're kind of on board with that also the models are on board with that is a little bit more believable given the circumstances. But if we see an El Nino, I think there's going to be an elevated chance at above average precipitation for the southeast, the Gulf states, and the northeast because of that nor'easter pattern. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a very low 2 out of 6 because winter is very far away. Point blank period. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think is the maximum rainfall with Tropical Storm Elsa and Cloud Watcher said maximum rainfall is 6 inches. This one is moving very quickly, guys, and I don't think it's going to have a lot of time to drop one foot of rain or anything like that. Definitely going to be a little bit lesser on that total rainfall. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Bamenic, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lear the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, 
Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Krenenthal. If you would like to join this Patreon and screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members here, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button to help that YouTube algorithm out. Also, leaving a comment down below does the same exact thing. And also, be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.